Hello everyone and welcome back to IMO Reviews. Unfortunately, I haven't quite got my set back to how it's going to be, so this video is going to be in the still image fashion. But don't you worry, you're going to get my ugly mug back very soon. But today, we have the good fortune of discussing Gladiator 2. Still directed by Ridley Scott and following on from where the first movie left off, the son of Maximus has to enter the Colosseum and battle against the powerful emperors of Rome. I must admit, when I heard that they were making this movie, I did tut and roll my eyes and ask myself why. Many people view the original as a timeless masterpiece and would probably argue that not only does it not need a sequel, but also that it's been far too long to achieve any real cultural impact like the first film did. That was until I saw the trailer and i have to admit they very quickly subdued my worries i thought it looked awesome and i was excited to see an epic winter blockbuster as we approached christmas and what i ended up with was a bit of a mixed bag unfortunately but let's start with the positives gladiator 2 kicks the doors down on entry there is an awesome opening to this film that really did warm my cockles as somebody who does love his history the whole film really is presented on an epic scale and proportion the action scenes are breathtaking and thoroughly enjoyable Enjoyable. The locations, the set design, the wardrobe, it was all so immersive. It really did pull me up out of my cinema seat and drag me to the middle of ancient Rome. And for that, I had a great time with this film. The music's impressive. I even enjoyed the performances all round. My personal favourite being Pedro Pascal. I really enjoyed the difficulties and struggles that his character went through in this film. He was by far the most interesting character to me and probably should have been the main character because his story is far more interesting than the the very repetitive one that is played out here and yes unfortunately that may have seemed brief for the positives but that really is it and we do now have to plummet into the negatives oh boy really scott has seemed to have got it stuck into his head that bigger is somehow better that's what she said <laughs> and unfortunately it isn't bigger is often just bigger or even messier because you're asking for so much more to be done and yet quite confusingly with gladiator 2 bigger somehow seems lazier. Technology has advanced significantly and the ideas of this movie do seem to ramp up from that original film and yet this sequel is so heavily reliant on CGI it's insane and it's not even very good. There are some baboons in this movie that honestly they look closer to bloody Dobermans. They did not look good at all. Ugh. Brother, ugh. what's that? What's that, brother? And what's crazy is that original movie just used damn animals. That is a real freaking tiger in there with Russell Crowe, or, well, Russell Crowe's stunt double, at least. I don't understand how you seem to think using shit technology with a big budget is gonna somehow be better. It isn't. It comes across as lazy. You had the money. Why did you just cut corners? And yes, as I touched upon before getting angrily distracted, it is almost a direct copy of that first film. If you have seen Gladiator, you more or less have seen Gladiator 2 already, because the path and story of which Paul Meskel's character goes upon is practically beat for beat. In fact, I'd go as far as arguing that 75 to 80% of this movie is a direct copy. The only real changes are that obviously it's set a little bit further into the future and we have different rulers in charge of Rome and some of the political backstabbing takes a bit more of a front seat here at times. Oh, and we're going to use CGI a lot instead of just doing the real practical thing that we could absolutely afford to do and just can't be bothered to. But apart from that, it is essentially the same damn film. So what was the point in this? Ultimately, I left the film shrugging my shoulders and scratching my head. I don't really know who it's for. I don't really know what it's trying to achieve. It wants to be this huge historical epic, but it also wants to be lazy and cut corners. It wants to evolve and tell a bigger story, but it also just wants to repeat old recycled trash. It is a confused movie, but overall, for what it is, I did have fun with it. It's nowhere near the worst thing I've seen this year. I mean, God above, I'd take this over Megalopolis any day of the week. I'd gladly watch it again. I had to watch this without Mrs. IMO. She's a little bit gutted. She still wants to see it, and I will go and see it with her. But, you know, maybe with my bar slightly lowered this time. Ultimately, it's fine. If you want a big historical epic, it will soothe and scratch those itches in the odd moment here and there. But you are going to be hugely disappointed if you're expecting some knockout 10 out of 10 award-winning movie that's going to move on 
this story from 40 years ago and do a Top Gun Maverick and breathe new life into the franchise. Yeah, because no, it, it does not do any of that. And it does feel 20 years too late. I'm going to give Gladiator 2 a 7 out of 10. Thank you for watching this review. Please be sure to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And please do hit the comment section as well. Have you seen Gladiator 2? What did you think about it? Let me know in the comment section down below. And of course, if you haven't had enough of this crazy ginger, we can always click on these suggested videos right here and get yourself lost in the Nymo wormhole. But if not, take care. And I look forward to seeing you on the next review.